welcome i'm going to talk about the scientific method in particular features of scientific method and steps involved in using the scientific method so to begin with let's look at the formal definition of scientific method if you open oxford english dictionary you will find the following definition a method or procedure that has characterized natural science since the 17th century consisting in systematic observation measurement and experiment and the formulation testing and modification of hypothesis so let's go back and look at these words that have been highlighted the first set of highlighted words are systematic observations measurement and experiment so one of the prime component of the scientific method is experiment and these experiments involve systematic observations or systematic measurements of certain phenomena well followed by this the second set of highlighted words are formulation testing and modification of hypothesis so the next critical thing is to formulate an hypothesis that explains the observations that explains the results of the experiment so we have to first formulate these hypothesis then we have to test this hypothesis and if necessary we have to modify this hypothesis so it's a ongoing process in which which we conduct experiments in a systematic fashion and then we follow this uh by formulation of hypothesis test the hypothesis and if necessary we review our hypothesis so what are the main features first of all you have to understand that this method builds on previously available knowledge so so you are not doing something completely independently you are looking at what your predecessors have done and then you proceed to conduct experiments or propose new hypothesis propose new models and so on so looking at what others have done previously is a crucial part of the scientific method well another important thing about the scientific method is by the very definition it continuously improves our understanding of the world and in the process it improves itself that is very amazing not only this method improves our understanding of the world it gives you more insights into how different natural phenomena and why they occur but the method also improves itself the method becomes sharper and sharper so this is an interesting feature of this method and the most critical aspect or most crucial aspect is what we call as falsifiability or refutability or testability so these words are synonymous here in in different uh, ways a hypothesis proposed by somebody else should be refutable it should be testable and then only it forms part of the scientific knowledge somebody else who is looking at a hypothesis should be in position to test the hypothesis and if he or she doesn't agree with it should be able to refute it should should be able to falsify it so this holds for a hypothesis for a model or even for an entire theory and this is a very very important feature of the scientific method what you discover through it say some body of knowledge in form of hypothesis model or theory you are permitted you are allowed to question it you are permitted to test it and if it doesn't you are permitted to come up with new tests and then if the new test do not agree with the hypothesis you are permitted to modify so this is one of the most crucial features of this scientific method so what are the steps involved the first and the primary thing that you do is to formulate a question well this is an art which you pick up when you 
start working in science and particularly working as a person who is doing research or who is doing some investigation into a question which is an open question. So, you have to formulate the right question. The next step is to develop a hypothesis or a conjecture. This is some statement about some explanation about the question, the phenomena that you are investigating. The most important thing about this conjecture or hypothesis that it should be falsifiable. What I mean by falsifiable? By falsifiable, what I mean is the hypothesis or the conjecture should be testable in a meaningful way. And what is critical is last two words by everyone. The scientific method uh, permits anyone, maybe an expert in the area, maybe a novice who is getting into it for the first time, anyone can question it, anyone can test it. The test that you construct to validate your hypothesis or conjecture should be falsifiable. It should be possible for anyone in principle to conduct the test. So, this is an important step constructing a falsifiable test and then we use this hypothesis to carry out predictions, to predict new phenomena which probably was not explained earlier. So, what do you do next? If you have predictions, you want to test those predictions and you want to conduct experiments to test or validate these predictions. So, it is not just enough to make predictions based on models, but you need to also conduct experiments to support your predictions. This is an important step, it is a very, very important step. Of course, once you conduct experiments, you get data from these experiments, it could be in different forms and then you need to analyze the data. So, Analyzing data, checking whether this conforms uh, to the predictions that you have made is important and if it does conform, what we do is we communicate these results for a peer review. Again, a very, very important step uh, in scientific method. We disseminate our results, we do not keep them to ourselves. These results that you get as a part of your hypothesis, experiments, test, validation are communicated for peer review. Who are peers? Peers are experts in the area who have been working for many years, have gathered sufficient knowledge to comment upon validity of your hypothesis, correctness of your experiments, correctness of your analysis and so on. So, a crucial step a equally crucial step in scientific method is to communicate or disseminate the results of your experimental verification, results of your analysis and, and so on. So, these are the steps that are involved in applying scientific method to any problem at hand.